Hello, I'm Trisha and I'm an animal communicator and healer and it's a long time since I've done a live video on Facebook so here we go. Um, I thought it was time to catch up a bit. There's lots of new people out there who maybe don't know quite as much about how I work or how animal communication works. Um, so today the plan is to answer your questions. I've had um, a few questions pre-submitted uh, because I'm very conscious that you guys are in all different time zones. Um, so you might be watching this um, after the fact, watching a recording. Um, if you do manage to join me live, let me know in the comments so that I know I'm not just talking to myself. And um, I'd love to get your live questions too. That would be really awesome. And um, depending how we go for time and how many of you are, are with me or not, um, I might even do some, um, some quick questions, um, pendulum answers for you or um, pull a card for you. We'll see how it goes. Um, so say hi if you're here and um, I will endeavour to stay on track. Easier said than done. Uh, some of the questions that have been submitted to me, they're quite big questions, <laughs> or at least the answers can be quite big. So um, yeah, we'll see how we go with that. I'll try to be as clear as possible without um, going too much off track, but, but yeah, there, there, there's a lot to it. Um, and um, I've also, uh, what I'm going to do is put some links in the comments as I'm going along so that if you're watching the video, you know, the comments come up in sort of real time. So you should get the, the correct links to what I'm talking about if it interests you to go further about that topic. So I hope that helps. Oh, somebody's with me. Hi, Renee. Thank you very much for joining me. And I have one of your questions here. Fancy that. Uh, you're top of my list. <laughs> Let's see. I had to print them all out, Look. So Renee, you asked, um, you would love to know how animal communication and healing works, where to start looking for guidance and learning, if that's something you'd share. Of course. I'm always happy to share and um, well, you know, it's like anyone who's passionate about what they do, they like to talk about, it, I suppose, and um, and share. So uh, just shout if I'm not being clear or if you have additional questions about it, just jump in, Renee. So let's see. So this is one of those quite big questions. <clears throat> um, how does it work? <laughs> That's the $60 million question. How does it work? Well, I can tell you how it works for me. And it's different for different people. And that's an important thing to remember if you are learning or trying to learn or want to learn for yourself. It's different for everyone. So um, that might sound slightly daunting but I would take that as a reassurance that um, just because it's not working for you the way it works for me doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. Absolutely not. Everyone gets their information in a slightly different way. So the way it works for me is that um, I can look at a photo and energetically connect with that animal. It's a bit like um, one analogy I've used before is if you remember or have seen in old movies, if you're not as old as me, if you remember <laughs> those old telephone switchboards that they used to have in like, I don't know, the 60s, 40s, 60s, um, where there was a switchboard operator and if you wanted to call someone you had to call the operator and they would plug you in to that number to connect you. 
it's a bit like that i'm making an energetic connection i'm plugging in to that animal <laughs> that's how it works for me um because everything is energy that's that's the big thing that you have to kind of get your head around or understand everything is energy and so if you can figure out how to um connect to a certain energy there you go that's that's it and for whatever reason i'm able to do that so i make an energetic connection i make a point of always asking permission i can't stress that enough you always ask permission of the animal is it okay for me to connect with you right now and if, if you get a no or feel it's like it's a no you don't go any further um so i make an energetic connection and then at that point that's where it can differ from person to person hi ivanka thank you for joining me i think you're in the states aren't you can't remember where renee is maybe you could tell me um so that's where it starts to differ for people a little bit for me when i connect to an animal i can see colors I can, oh, Australia, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Oh, Renee's in New Zealand, oh, cool. Um, I can see colors. And, and the side note to this part is that through a lot of practice, you learn how to interpret the information that you're getting. So I've learned through a lot of practice what the different colors mean for me. So colors, um, I get emotions. So, you know, I might connect with the horse and just get a really sad feeling or, or you know, a fearful feeling, an emotion. Um, I can see um, the body so i kind of scan the body and i get stopped in specific places if there is an issue there and and i get words but i mostly get words in response to questions so what i don't get and i think this is what most people think an animal communicator is or how animal communication works what I don't get is streams of conversation. I don't just have going on with it when I connect with an animal. That's not how it works for me. Um, it, sure, it works for some people like that, but not for me. I have to specifically, um, I have a little protocol that I go through where I scan the body. I um, look at and feel and rebalance their energy. And then I ask a lot of questions about, you know, you know, are they happy? Do they like where they live? Um, do they like their job? All sorts of things. And depending on what has come up until that point or what information the owner has shared with me. So that's how it works for me. Let me know if that's making sense or if you have any other questions around how that works. Um, I think for some people, I think healing falls into this um, camp as well. There's a difference between people who are born with it, who can just do it and they don't even know how or why it just happens. Or you're walking down the street and they hear voices and it's an animal talking to them. There's a difference between that kind of person, that kind of skill that just seems to be there and you, it just happens. And people more like me who have um, learned it. Um, <coughs> I believe if you want it badly enough and if you can put in the practice and do the work anyone can learn how to do it because i think that's me and 
everything in my background led me to this point where I can do this. And that is that I've loved horses all my life. I've had horses of my own since I was 21. Um, I have, you know, my whole life has been about horses. So I know horses. I've I've taught horses, I've taught people, I've competed, um, I've I've learned everything I can learn about um, horses' bodies, horses' minds, um, body work, and then energy work. And all of that brought me to a place where I just all the pieces fell into place and I can I can do this. The catalyst um, for me was joining a meditation group and it was a meditation group that had been together for about 20 years and had really strong energy. And for me, that um, kind of tipped the balance, if you like, all of a sudden, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> from the first night I went to that group, all of a sudden, it seems like um, things just started happening. And so I started practicing what I realized I could suddenly do or, or have access to on, on client sources. <laughs> it's okay, they did know. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> um, and so I was lucky in that I had access to a lot of horses and I could practice a lot before I finally sort of made the switch and, and started doing this full time. So um, Renee says that makes perfect sense. Good. <laughs> so that's how it works for me. And, and, and it varies for other people, you know. Um, and uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I ran an online animal communication course, learning course for clients um, a few times in a row a few years ago. And one client um, when they got to the part about colours and maybe seeing colours, she said, well, I keep seeing red and green and I don't know, no, I don't know what it means. Um, and, and I don't get red and red and green, not in the way she was describing. So, you know, we were talking about it and then we, we went, well, could it be that um, red means stop and green means go or red means no you're on the wrong wrong track or green and green means yes you're on the right track so you know it's that sort of thing it's thinking about what you are actually getting and getting it often enough that you can start to see a pattern and then once you can see that pattern you can start to use it you know you can start to say if that's how it works for you you can start to say um show me green if I'm on the right track or like that. So um, yeah, hope that makes sense. So let me put a couple of links in the comments. Um, I haven't done that live online um, animal communication training for quite a few years now. If you're watching this video and that's something you would be interested in, please let me know, because if there was enough interest, I would consider doing it again. Um, but what I do have now is a self study version of that course. And um, so it's six weeks worth of information and training that you can do at your own pace. Um, so I'm going to put the link for that in there. Um, but there's three links here that I'm going to give you. The first one is um, for some free animal communication training that's on my website. So if you're just starting out, sorry, I'm just pasting all this stuff in. If you're just starting out, if you're curious and you just kind of want to try things out for yourself and see how you know how you get on, this is a good place to start. So you can check out that link for free animal communication training that's on and that's on my website. There's quite a few videos and bits and pieces in there that can give you a start. Wet, wet your whistle, as they say. Um, and if you're 
if you then want to go a little bit further or you're maybe you're already a little bit further on than that there's another um kind of um workshop um that goes a bit further and teaches you a bit more about deepening that connection with your horse and then the third link is um to my self-study course um it's great value for money you've got lifetime access to it you can repeat parts of it you can get all the way through and then start at the beginning again whatever you like however works best for you there's videos there's um, quizzes and exercises and um, homework and you can also ask questions in there or um, give feedback about what you experienced as you were going through there's guided meditations and all sorts of things so hope that helps those of you that are curious about how it all works how it works for me um, and how to get started learning animal communication um, if any of you are further on than that um, and want more of a sort of mentorship to find out um, how it actually works best for you and where you could take it from here because maybe maybe your skills when you learn animal communication um, lead you in a different direction than, than what this has been for me. Um, you know, maybe you're supposed to be healing or maybe you're supposed to be working with a specific animal or if you're curious about that sort of thing, wanting to kind of harness your skills or get more clarity on where to go next, um, feel free to contact me about that too, because I do one to one um, uh, coaching mentoring sessions where we will connect with your spirit guides and find out what your path is or what your next steps are. So let me know if that is of interest to any of you. OK. So next um nita asked this might sound like a weird question but just as animals mirror their humans can this work the opposite way too i recently saw a post whereby someone said that she got the exact symptoms soon after her pet did is this possible well, I think anything's possible. <laughs> I believe everything. <laughs> um, yeah, it's totally possible. Um, there's all sorts of reasons for that. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> some of it can be energetic, but you're you're on the same energetic level or you're the same vibration some might say um, and therefore you might be prone to the same illnesses or um, you know things going on with you um, it might be that your horse is trying to or animal is trying to show you something by um, showing you those symptoms in themselves um, yeah, I would say it's definitely possible. There's all sorts of reasons why it might be. And I would definitely, if that was a, if that was me, I would want to explore that for sure. I would want to, um, I, as an animal communicator and healer, would be really curious to to connect with both of them and find out what was actually going on there and um, and why. So, yeah, it's some, definitely something you can be aware of and look out for. And I guess if it hap if something like that happens to you. Um, take a breath. Uh, clear your mind a little maybe sit with the animal 
and start asking some questions. You know, are you trying to tell me something? Is there a lesson in this for me? Um, is what I'm feeling here my issue or is it your issue? I'll take a slight tangent there. Um, nobody asked this question actually, but I'm going to talk about empaths. Tell me if you know what an empath is. Um, when you're an empath, and I would say, I'll go out on a limb and say, if you're an animal person, and if you're the sort of animal person who's interested in animal communication, and if you're the sort of animal person who um, always is curious and looking for a better connection with your animals and um, how to do things the nicest way with your animals. And if you're the sort of animal person who gets upset easily when you see animals being badly treated, for instance, you're most likely an empath. Empaths um, feel the emotions of other people and or animals. So, for instance, um, I had a client who was a really strong empath. I'm sure she won't mind me telling this story. <laughs> Um, I won't mention any names. Um, she had to go to the doctor's surgery, had an appointment with the doctor, was sitting in the waiting room and somebody else in the waiting room, I can't remember exactly what happened, somebody else in the waiting room was having a really hard time or had a meltdown or something. Um, and she, my client, um, suddenly felt Actually, I'm not sure if what the other person was doing was visible or not, but my client suddenly felt um, huge. Um, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here because I can't remember the exact um, situation, but um, grief or fear or whatever it was and it wasn't she hadn't gone in feeling like that but all of a sudden she had these really strong negative emotions and it was really upsetting to her and she was overwhelmed and didn't know what was going on why was this happening where was this coming from it was only afterwards I think that she realized all that emotion all that negative emotion she was feeling was coming from someone else it wasn't hers and so um, if you've ever had that sort of experience where you you feel a certain way, you usually you might feel a positive feeling. You might suddenly feel incredibly happy or have a, a be, you know, surrounded with love or something. But more often than not, what we notice is the negative emotions. So if you ever walk into a crowded place and suddenly have a feeling of dread or, or anger or anything like that, you're probably picking up the energy of that emotion from someone else that's in your vicinity. And that can be really hard for empaths. Um, the good news is it's something you can harness. It's a great, um, uh, it's not really a skill, it's not something you either are or you aren't an empath. I don't know that it's something necessarily learned. Um, but if you are an empath, that's a, a great door into things like animal communication because you you just need to learn how to harness those feelings that you're getting. And um, you can start by doing that with your animals. So, you know, asking, oh, well, I swear I didn't have a headache when I woke up this morning. Is it my headache or is it, you know, my horse's headache or my dog's headache? Um, oh, my, my elbow is sore today. 
is that mine or is that someone else's? That's a great way to get started with animal communication and um, connect um, on a deeper level with your animals. So if you have any more questions about being an empath or, or um, want to share anything of, regarding to that, maybe experiences that you've had, let me know because that's really interesting. I hope that helps. <coughs> um, okay. Holly says, what would be some reasons why an animal would not be honest during a communication session? That's a really good question. And that's an important question because it does happen in my experience. Um, and it's one of those things where um, I guess owners, when they um, book an animal communication session or they get the results back of an animal communication session, they you want to know that, um, well, you wouldn't like to think that your animal was lying, would you? And you sort of, it's easy to assume that if they hide something, maybe that means that the communicator isn't very good or um, you know something was wrong with the session not necessarily um, so yes animals can hide things in a session they can and they can be less than truthful <laughs> let's say about things in a session but they also might not bring something up purely because it's not important to them and that and that's a, an important thing for us to remember just because we think it should be important you know that injury they've got or this thing that happened it doesn't mean it's important to them and i believe that's because animals live so much more in the present than we do so if it's something that that happened in the past you know it's not necessarily a current thing um they're much better at going well that's in the past so so that's why it didn't come up it's just it's not really at the forefront of their mind um they might hide things because they don't want to upset their owner or you know they don't want to upset the apple cart you know it might be that they think if they say they don't like where they live their owner will sell them or their owner will send them away somewhere else or you know there's all sorts of reasons why they might hide something um and when it comes to not telling the truth um or not being honest um um same same reasons really you know if they know that um, say it's a specific discipline that you're doing and they know that the owner loves that discipline they'll say yeah it's okay where, where actually they're going I don't really like it but I'm doing it for her that would be one reason why they might not be honest um, so I think the thing that's important two things one is that if you're an owner going into an animal communication session remember to be open remember to uh, not take it personally if they say something you don't want to hear um, you're not going to encourage them to be open with you if you don't acknowledge what they're trying to tell you and I've had that a few times <laughs> not very often thankfully but every now and then I get a client who kind of doesn't want to hear it it's not the answer they wanted so you can understand why some animals would just not go there because that person is not going to listen to them that's how they feel um, 
So it might be you <laughs> that's causing them to be less than honest. That would be one reason. Um, the other thing about all of that is um, the animal communicator might not know that up front, might not know um, what the owner is like or, you know, how open they're going to be. Um, for me, especially because I work blind most of the time, probably, well, probably 90% of brand new sessions are, are blind. In other words, the owner doesn't tell me anything up front. All I have is a photo and name of the animal or horse. Um, so I don't know what the background is, what happened to them, what their relationships like or anything like that. So um, when I forgot what I started saying there. <laughs> um, when I'm asking questions in, in the session, I try hard to ask questions in a way that kind of um, leaves things open for the horse. Um, and and if I feel, and you know, this is where I might get a feeling about, oh, you know, they're holding back a bit, then I'll try asking the question a different way. Or I've had occasionally, I think I had one in the last couple of weeks, occasionally I have to say to a horse, um, because this one recently I, I felt like it was holding back a bit, I, I said to them, um, this can be between us. Why don't you just tell me first and then we'll decide whether to tell mum or not or, you know, what to do next. <laughs> it's like there has to be a code of a cone of silence sometimes because I have to have their trust in order to help them at all. Um, I think I've only done that a few times and every time I've done that, I ha it has been okay and I've then taken what they've said back to the owner and the owner has been fine with it. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are learning or, or curious about, you know, how it all works and stuff, um, bear that in mind. You have to have the animal's um, uh, interests at the forefront of their mind, of your mind, and the owner is secondary to that, even although they're the one paying, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so, hope that answers the question. Um, let me know if you have any other comments or questions about that. Um, okay. Oh, so another little tangent. This wasn't a question that was asked, but this comes back to what we were saying at the beginning about how does it work um i'll just explain this bit to you sorry i'm going to yawn oh don't know where that came from okay so about how animal communication works um for me When I, um, because I ask a lot of questions in my sessions as a way of getting all the information that I want to feed back to the owner, um, I have found, I learned fairly quickly that the quality of the answer you get depends very much on the question that you've asked. <clears throat> And if you ask a question that can be answered with a yes or no, that actually gives you only a quite a small amount of information. Well, I might be about to be disturbed by my husband. Just so walk past the window. Um, so what I learned very early on was to measure, here he comes, 
oh, maybe not, <laughs> to measure um, the answer that I was getting. Now, to explain what I'm talking about, um, if I just ask, are you happy today? You might say, yeah, I'm fine. Well, what does that actually mean? Is that a, is that a useful piece of information or not? In an animal communication session where I have to give that information back to the owner, it's not actually that useful or it's not to me, it's not enough information. It's not clear enough. <clears throat> so I started measuring it. Um, if I just get a yes, I'll, I'll measure on a scale from zero to five. Oh, so I asked, how happy are you? Are you happy? Zero to five, how happy is this horse? And a yes could be one out of five, <laughs> which actually isn't very happy. <laughs> or it could be five out of five. But that's much more useful information, isn't it? And it lets me know whether I need to ask supplementary questions or not. You know, if it was a one out of five, I can say, well, so you don't seem very happy. What's going on? You know, is this the problem or is this the problem? And we can start sort of narrowing down what's actually going on. Um, so I measure a lot of things in my sessions so that I can, I've got that information and also so that I can tell whether something has improved from the beginning of the session to the end of the session. So, for instance, if they weren't happy at the beginning of the session, are they happy by the end when I've maybe done some healing, I've rebalanced their energy and I've, I've reassured them about things and they've been listened to? Usually they're a whole lot happier at the end of a session than they might have been at the beginning. But that's useful. You know, if I get to the end and it's still one out of five, I'm going, OK, I've missed something. There's something else I need to ask or I need to go back to the owner and find out what else is going on here because this isn't right. There's something that's not right. So that's much more useful information. <clears throat> um, if um, um, I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Renee and Ivanka, if you're still there, please let me know and I will interrupt this broadcast to do uh, either a quick yes, no question and answer for you or pull a card for you if you were, would like. So let me know if you're still there. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. <laughs> There's a, a light shining on the screen. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, so how I how I do that is uh, is basically in my head. This is where it all sounds a bit out there and woo woo. But in my head, when I'm doing my animal communication sessions, I just um, it's like I can feel or see that scale from zero to five. And I I just um, go through the scale until I'm stopped and then I can identify what number they're at on that scale. That's how it works for me. So I hope that makes sense. For me, that gives a much more um, complete um, reading and much more detailed information. I guess Renee and Ivanka have deserted me. Oh, <laughs> if anyone else is there, let me just say hello. Um, it says there's six viewers, but who knows? It is Facebook after all. I feel like that. I need to move away from that that little um, light there. <laughs> Reflection. <clears throat> OK, now that. Oh, hi, Melanie. Thanks for joining me. Let me know if it's let me know where you are. What country are you in? And um, let me know if it's making sense so far. And if you have any questions, please just dive in. Same for you, Jen. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> It's always nice to know that you're not just speaking into the void. Um, but I am, oh, well, Jen's in Australia, so that's a couple of people from Australia so far. Uh, yeah, so I've just been, oh, South Africa, cool. Thanks for joining us, Melanie. Um, yeah, so I've been going through 
the questions and um what i was talking about just there about um, measuring um measuring answers that i get in sessions leads me on to the next uh, hi amanda uh the next topic that was asked about was pendulums Gillian, my number one fan. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Gillian. Now, look, if you're joining me from work, that's very naughty, Gillian. Um, <laughs> and hi, Jody from Colorado. Thank you guys for joining me. So um, who wants to know about pendulums? Anyone? Hands up. <coughs> Here's my pendulum that I use. So um, the questions that were asked about pendulums were, um, how does the pendulum work? Um, does it just emphasize, translate the movements of your body? So the answers are being made physical through the pendulum swinger. Or is there some other explanation? Mm. Um, and then Lisa asked, um, how does using the pendulum work in your communication, including how and why you chose a particular pendulum? So here we go. This is the pendulum that I use most of the time. And I'll put my hand next to it so you can see how big it is. It's a big one and it's made of wood. <clears throat> so pendulums. Um, if you make it to the end of this section on pendulums, I will very happily answer some yes, no um, questions for you with my pendulum. So pendulums, um, first of all, in my normal animal communication sessions, I do them basically in a sort of meditative state and I don't use my pendulum at all in those sessions not even for that measuring that I was talking about. Um, I use them supplementary, if that makes sense, or separately from my sessions and kind of for different reasons. One of the, the two main things that I use a pendulum for, one is for healing sessions because this particular pendulum is a healing pendulum um, it's a geometric shape um, which energetically is strong. It's a very strong pendulum. And, um, and the fact that it's made of wood means that it doesn't hold on to any of the energy of people that I'm healing or what I'm doing with it. So it's a really good pendulum crystal pendulums oh I've, now this is a fancy one oh i've got a couple here actually i'll show you a couple of different pendulums so this is this is a more um sort of standard pendulum that you might find in any crystal shop that's rose quartz that's quite a nice little pendulum but but the other difference with this one so a it's a crystal but also it has a chain on it this one has a string on it and energetically that's supposed to be better too than a, than a chain i can't remember why um so actually i can't remember the last time i used this but this would be an, a fine pendulum for you to use for yourself i just wouldn't use it um for healing other people or animals but you, you this is, would be a great starter pendulum that's the sort of thing that you'll get at any crystal shop. Now, this one might freak you out a bit. This one's a bit complicated. I'm just doing this to show you the size. Um, so this one is amethyst. It's a lovely stone and copper. And it has little, um, I think these might be magnets from memory on it. Uh, and again, it's got a, a string rather than a, a chain although it does have these sort of connecting bits but um and all of this gubbins that's on this and the fact that it's a massive big amethyst makes that a really strong powerful um pendulum as well although i don't use it very often um 
so I use a pendulum when I'm doing healing work uh, because I that's quite a separate thing that I do from animal communication humans too um, actually probably mostly humans and then I also use a pendulum when I'm doing my pendulum surveys that you've probably seen on this page and um, the reason I use a pendulum for those is because it's quick it's a quick and easy way of getting a fast answer about something particularly if it's just a yes no answer and um, let me think let me just look back at the the question how does it work uh, yeah I better talk about how they work um, how a pendulum works is uh, it's basically I believe it's a way of tapping into your subconscious and or tapping into universal energy so um, again with the energy and the connections right so if I was when I'm doing those pendulum surveys I look at the picture that you put on the screen uh, that you share in the comments for me and I make a quick energetic connection with that horse and then with that connection live if you like I use my pendulum to ask my whatever the question is um, the way that a pendulum works then is um, this comes back to practice again and learning about your particular pendulum and and your connection with your pendulum but um let's let's see if this works as a demonstration i'll put it right in front of my face I'll just wait till it stops um okay i'm going to say show me a yes and it's <coughs> sorry <laughs> it's spinning clockwise and I'm just going to bring my hand down keep showing me a yes to show you that my hand doesn't move show me a yes my hand isn't moving keep showing me a yes so they can see okay now I'll try and keep it where you can see both show me a no and now it's spinning anti-clockwise so for me and this pendulum clockwise is a yes anti-clockwise is a no and um, you do it you practice often enough to um, to where you you know for a fact which is which and that you're getting a true answer I'm going to share another um, link for you uh, because I, if you're interested in pendulums I do have a very cheap little um, one hour I think workshop about how to choose a pendulum um, where to buy them what to buy um, how to cleanse it um, how to tune into it how to ask it questions and also how to use charts which I'll talk about next so you might be interested in that um, so you learn um, what way your pendulum moves for a yes and what way it moves for a no it might be forward and back it might be side to side it might be circling left circling right so you learn what which it is for your pendulum um, <clears throat> and in that little um, workshop I go into all sorts of questions you can ask to to get to the point where you trust that and it's consistent um, but the other way you can use the pendulum and this is what I do most of is with charts and that might be <laughs> this is this is don't get too excited now or don't be too in awe of this this is a really fancy chart that I use nearly every day <laughs> um, so it's just got a yes and a no and I just spin my pendulum over that to get yes or no rather than waiting for the circle for me I find that quicker it will go straight away to one or the other rather than having to kind of wait for the circle to happen um, and then right through to charts like a, a percentage chart you know to so I might say 
um, how much, how happy is this animal? Oh, it was only 35 percent. Mm, OK, um, so it's a way of asking questions and getting answers. And you might just ask lots of yes, no questions when you're getting started and um, and then kind of whittle down um, to get the information you're looking for. And you can you might be asking percentage type questions or you might um, actually if I show you. Oh, um, I've been I've been doing this is a bit complicated maybe but I've been doing body code recently and that's a, the very first I'm trying to get this straight <laughs> the very first body code um, uh, chart um, so you know if you're asking you might want to um, put all the supplements that your horse is getting on a chart and ask um uh which of these does my horse need uh you know or a range of supplements that you think he might need okay does my horse need any of these supplements and and see which ones it's uh, um pointing you at and then there's all sorts of questions you can ask about that um i hope that makes sense oh hard to see the chart at this end um, well if i put this one See, that's the percentage one. Hopefully you can see that. Here's my fancy one, Gillian. It's so fancy, that's why you can <laughs> can't see it properly. Oh, it's so fancy. Uh, oh, hi, Lisa. Lisa, it was you that asked about pendulums, wasn't it, Lisa? So I hope you caught all that and um, it was clear. Um, let me see what else was asked and whether I covered all of that. How does it work? Um, <laughs> how does it work? Uh, yeah, so it's not it's not really. Y your hand isn't moving, your hand isn't moving the pendulum, but it's like the energy is coming through you and moving it or your subconscious because your subconscious knows things you, you, that you don't know, you know, your subconscious is causing it to move. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but as you probably figured out from me by now, um, it works for me and so I believe it and trust it completely. <laughs> I just do. Oh good, I'm glad that helped Lisa. Um, yes, well, I hope that made sense. I think that was everything about pendulums. So let's take a little break, you guys that are um, still here would any of you like me to ask a question with my pendulum for you um so if it's a question about yourself or about your horse or a pet um a yes no question uh, a question that i can give you a yes no a yes no or a percentage um answer to and i'll give you a quick answer with my pendulum um and then we'll see what comes up next after that. So next we're going to talk about energy, horses energy and chakras or chakras, depending how you like to say it. Um, so let me know if anyone wants me to ask them a question for them. Um, or I can pull a card for you if you would like me to pull a card. Uh, I'll start talking about this. Facebook isn't being very speedy. Let's see. Um, I'll talk about chakras first because that leads into um, energy. OK, Amanda would like a card. Oh, are you leaving it up to me? I'm looking over here at my vast array of Oracle cards. I'll see which one you're supposed to have, Amanda. Uh, for Amanda, for Amanda. I'll be back. Um, let's see. Oh, it's this one. Okay. You're getting this today, Amanda. <clears throat> um, and any of you who are interested in Oracle cards, or even if you hear me talking about them all the time and you don't know what they are or how they work or 
why anyone would want to do such a thing. Um, I do have an oracle card workshop too. It tells you all about oracle cards and how to use them and, and why they're so fabulous. Um, and I also have my own oracle cards. Little booklet about what your horse wants you to know. Here's some of the pictures. Oops. Oops, somewhere upside down. <laughs> so they've all got lovely pictures on one side and then messages on the other side. Oh, sorry, they're upside down. And all you do is shuffle the deck and pick a card and find out what your horse wants you to be aware of. OK, this is the Animal Kin Oracle deck that I'm shuffling for. Oh, everyone wants cards and not questions. OK, I'm doing the cards. So this one's for Amanda. What does Amanda need to know right now? That one jumped straight out. What was it? Ooh. Peacock. Inspiration. I'm going to have to put my specs on and look up the book. What number is it? 52. OK, Amanda. <clears throat> Let's see. Pride in our achievements creates inspiring change. Um, there's lots about peacocks. The key message here is in finding balance and knowing when to move from one energy mode to another seamlessly and with grace. Through symbols, the peacock teaches us that it takes many repetitions, repetitious steps to fully awaken to our most spiritual selves through our spiritual practice in our daily rituals and lifestyle changes. I think there's a big message for you there, Amanda. Um, the, last, the last sentence says, once we collect the wisdom we seek, we are then guided to showcase this to the world, proud of our story, our journey and of our accomplishments and to never apologise for how beautiful, powerful, wise and talented we are. I hope you're feeling that because I'm feeling that, Amanda. I think that's beautiful and um, uh, the word inspiration was a good one, actually. I hope that inspires you to... Um, accept your gift, gifts maybe and move forward <clears throat> let me know if that resonates beautiful she says good i'm glad um okay i need to scroll back up to see who was next jillian a card for jillian let's see what which deck jillian it is oh <clears throat> Oh, interesting. I haven't used this one for a while. You're getting this, Gillian. Earth magic. I probably should have whittled it down to two or three decks before we started. But anyway, you're getting this. Okay, this is for oh, this is for Gillian. So I always shuffle the deck first while I'm thinking about the person and saying they're in this situation saying their name because there's so many of you and so much energy and i just have to clarify so for jillian what does jillian need to know right now shuffling 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 <clears throat> and cards are saying you haven't used us for so long why should we for Gillian. Help Gillian out here. The cards obviously wanted a bit of attention. <clears throat> what does Gillian, here we go. Ooh. 
so it's a lotus flower it says unfoldment mint unfoldment let me see if i can find the um i have my opinion of what that means jillian <laughs> unfoldment be good if these were uh, alphabetical oh lotus 92 <clears throat> here we go mm. <laughs> love it your spiritual unfoldment is occurring at all times whether or not you are aware of it <laughs> Jillian knows why I'm laughing uh, <laughs> It is inevitable as long as you put your trust in the hands of the creator, the one who holds the light. Like the lotus, your soul is always reaching for the light to fulfill its karmic destiny. But even in that process, there are periods of darkness and times to rest. It's a natural cycle, one that cannot truly be coerced or halted. Um, you do not need to strive or be driven by spiritual ambition. It does no good to try and force growth upon yourself. Allowing is the key here. Allow the place in you that naturally wants to follow the light to do so while recognising that even when you have complete faith, you will face challenges and occasionally suffering. Your steady faith and love will guide you on your journey of returning to the light. Well, that's quite nice so let me know if that resonates with you Gillian <laughs> so you don't have to do anything you just have to allow it allow it to happen okay let's see who's next <clears throat> Jen McGuinness oh so you're getting the horse cards Jen yes yes I don't know whether you have these or not. I know some of you have them. Um, okay, for Jane. Jane McGuinness, what does she need to know right now? Shuffling, shuffling. Oh, is that one there? Is it this one? Yes. Okay, here's the card. Hope you can see it okay. It's of a, a double swirl. Oh, what a nice message. It says, I'm part of you. Now, <laughs> these are my cards, but I still need to look up the book. Uh, it's number 11. possibilities for this card it can be um relating to a horse that has passed over that wants you wants to remind you that they're still with you and it can be a horse that is a living horse that is um still with you in some way that perhaps is looking for more attention or just wanting you to remember that um they're still there um, I'm still part of you and always will be. Uh, um, and I've written a living horse maybe trying to tell you something about your relationship. Let me know if that resonates, Jane, and if you know what that's about. What's Jane? Uh, Jodie. Jodie. This one. This is a bit of a fun deck, so we'll see what comes up with this one. This is the Divine Energy Oracle. They can be a little bit tongue-in-cheek, these ones. Okay, Jody Lone Hand. What does Jody need to know? Oh, I just saw that Jody. <laughs> I just saw you were asking a question instead, Gillian. I'll get to that anyway. I had scrolled up. 
and I was at, I'm going through all the the ones wanting a card. So you got your card anyway. Um, so Jody, 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 what does Jody need to know right now? I also think um, with because this is quite a big deck. How many cards is this? Sixty three cards. Sometimes you know if you think that there's one card maybe there's more than one but if you think that there's one card that that needs to come to your attention you might have to shuffle quite a bit until it lands on top or jumps out of the deck or something so it just takes a bit of shuffling so uh so jody what does jody need to know what's the message for jody right now oh see that one just jumped out <coughs> Oh, here's your message. Let me know if that resonates with you, Judy. Okay, Lisa wants to know, is the extruded, is the extruded barley helping Walter? I think I'll do a percentage, Lisa, rather than just a yes, no. Lisa Messenger and Walter. To what extent is the extruded barley? I'm doing this over my chart. To what extent is the extruded barley helping Walter? 100% Lisa. Keep it up. So that's good. <clears throat> um, does Archie have an allergy issue? Um, I'm going to do it. I'll do a yes, no first. I've got my pendulum again. Does Archie have an allergy issue? I get a yes. Uh, so I'm going to ask to what, pers to what extent does Archie have an allergy issue? Oh, it's quite high. 100% Gillian. <clears throat> so you know if that was you doing it for yourself um or me doing a session we would then be trying to narrow that down you know is it food is it um environment is it something in the house is it something in the car uh asking all of those questions you can start narrowing it down by using a pendulum that's just another way of doing it so i hope that helps confirms your suspicions perhaps Card for Renee. Uh, Renee, Renee. Hmm, not one of these. Oh, oh what's that one? Okay. <laughs> can, you, can you tell I have a lot of um, decks of oracle cards? I get drawn to them and I, when I see them, you know, in a shop or at a fair or something, and um, I'm like, Oh, I have to have that one. Yep. Um, and I bring them home and I shuffle them and I use them at least once <laughs> and then they go on the shelf <laughs> and they mostly get used on things like this. I don't tend to use them an awful lot for myself. Now and then I'll get drawn to one. But I still love them. And the horse ones I use a lot. That's all right, Gillian, don't, that's okay. Um, who am I doing? Renee. Okay, so what does Renee, oh, sorry, I didn't show you. This is the um, Medicine Woman Oracle, Renee. They're lovely cards, actually. Um, this is the backs of them. Nice colours and lovely gold on the edges. Oops, oh, okay, well, that one just totally jumped out. And this is the one for you, so get you out of that reflection um personal power it says um i encourage you to be the master of your destiny nice let me look up the book personal power Number 
eleven. That's not right. Oh, geez. So how do these blooming things work? The numbers don't match. Well, here we go. Page 54. Let's see. The time has come to rise up and take your rightful place, Renee. <laughs> The medicine woman benevolent, benevolently asks you, is there a situation in which you over adapt? Is there someone to whom you cede your power? You run the real risk of not living your life, your own life. You don't need anyone else's approval. Be bold, be who you truly are. Develop your talents and act. Commit to holding aloft your values, peace, truth and the planet's conservation. You're supported. Move forward in the full presence of your soul's qualities and validate your choices. Nice. Let me know if that resonates for you. <clears throat> okay, where are we at? Oh, Jen, yes, to totally could be your dog. Yes, yes, oh. Sorry for your loss, but he, so he's, he's, um, he, is it he, um, still with you and you've not to forget him. I'm sure you won't, but he want, they want you to know that. <laughs> nice. Hi, Ruth. Um, can we fix Blossom's lameness? Oh, well, there's a question. Uh, let's see. How will I ask that? I'll do, um, I'll do a percentage for you. Let's see to what extent can we fix because a lot of this um whether it's animal communication or the pendulum the question you ask matters Let's see if i can think of an example maybe one will occur to me um you know you have to be quite specific and clear about what you're actually asking uh so oh she molly um so Ruth and Blossom, um, oh, I've got my pendulum over the percentage chart. Um, how possible is it to fix Blossom's lameness? Oh, well, I get 100% Ruth. So that's positive. <laughs> okay then. I think I got to the end of the quest the um requests so let's see where did i get to um final part of the uh, when i when i looked at all these questions initially i thought oh maybe i'll have to maybe the best thing to do is do three different videos you know split this that's me banging on my <laughs> this thing behind me <laughs> i don't know if you could hear that or not uh do three different three separate videos you know even you know one a day for three days or something and because there was kind of three distinct topics there was animal communication then there's pendulum and there's energy energy and chakras um anyway i decided just to go for it uh, largely because um if it's taken me this long to do this video you wouldn't trust me to you know <laughs> carry on and finish the series let's just do them all right now so <laughs> so here we go we're doing it um and good luck to anyone who's watching the video afterwards and having to troll through this all i hope you get the information you want out of it um you're welcome ruth um and renee uh okay so chakras so Cheryl said, um, talk about chakras, why they get out of balance or smaller, etc. Um, and this is because in my sessions, those of you that have had sessions with me, have heard me talk about chakras all the time because <clears throat> I routinely uh, um, inspect, if you like, look at 
the animal or person's chakras when I'm doing a session and clear and rebalance them. So the chakras are something we all have, us and animals, um, and they are, um, the simplest explanation is that they are energy centers and we have seven major chakras that kind of run the length of your spine. So for humans, they're um, vertical, you know, from the top of your head down to the base of your spine. And for a horse or dog, um, they would be horizontal going from the head to um, the top of the tail. There are minor chakras too, in the legs and in other parts of the body, but the major ones are the most important ones. And each chakra also has a different colour relating to it and, and different um, functions, if you like. They relate to different body uh, parts or organs. They relate to different emotions, different skills. Um, and ideally, you want them to be clear and strong. Um, uh, they're like they're like little vortices. So you want them to be spinning that energy, and you want them to be aligned. Well, for a human, you want them to be aligned to each other, so in line and and in balance. And in my sessions, that's something I look at and address every single time. Um, and so the thing to remember with all energy is that we're never going to be 100% in balance 100% of the time. We're just not because, you know, life happens. <laughs> um, for all sorts of reasons, we get out of balance and our energy gets out of balance and our chakras get out of balance. And so, for instance, if you think of the base chakra, which would be right at the base of the spine for a human, um, it's related to, um, for instance, being grounded feeling grounded and if you're not oh you might be you know a bit wishy feeling a bit wishy-washy feeling a bit airy fairy just a bit out of it mm, not very grounded um, um and that can happen for all sorts of reasons it might be remember i was talking before about if you're an empath and you walk into a room and there's bad energy there that can be enough to put your energy out of balance and affect you and make you feel ungrounded. Um, or it might be, you know, if you trip when you're outside and sprain your ankle, that can put your energy out because the physical is going to affect the mental and emotional and the energetic. Let me know if this is all making sense. <laughs> um, I, because it makes sense to me, I might gloss over things. So feel free to uh, give me a prod if I'm not being clear. Um, so the key really is starting to learn for yourself and or for your animals when you're in balance and when you're out of balance and what to do to get back in balance. Simple, right? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, it can be, but it's a learned skill. As with all of these things that we're talking about here, it's a learned skill. Um, so being more aware, um, noticing these things, being curious, noticing it with yourself, noticing it with your horse. For instance, with me, I know for sure that I'm out of balance when I start saying negative things, like feeling a bit grumpy and just being a bit negative. I'm out of balance. I need to do something about that. And for me, I can at that point go, oh, okay, let's clear and balance myself. And all of a sudden <laughs> I feel better and I'm not speaking 
rubbish and you know crap <laughs> negative stuff anymore um how often do i do that mm. well quite often i mean i'm not talking multiple times a day or even daily or maybe not even well, probably probably at least once a week a couple of times a week maybe um but that's neither here nor there you know it can vary from person to person depends what situations you're in but the main thing to remember is that it does matter and learning how to rebalance yourself or learning how to rebalance your horse would be fabulous a great thing to do um with your animals with your horses um if you if everything's been going along great and then all of a sudden they seem to have changed in some way you know he doesn't seem happy or gosh he's clumsy all of a sudden and i don't know why or you know if something's just off i can just about guarantee their chakras are going to be out of balance their energy is going to be out of balance and for me as a number one thing that might help your horse or yourself feel better that's it address the energy first um as i said the physical and the mental and emotional can affect negatively affect your energy and put you out of balance and vice versa if your energy gets out of balance for whatever reason then chances are you're going to be less happy you're going to or your horse or pet less happy or um uh, more accident prone or more uh, or just can't quite get healthy because that your energy is out of balance <clears throat> so number one is address that thing um i've been saying since the beginning of the year that i'm going to do some sort of workshop to teach you guys um about um energy healing and some things that you might be able to do with your own animals and i haven't done it yet uh, i need you all to put some pressure on me and make me do it <laughs> get my finger out um because it's really important and there are things you can do actually here's one thing you can do <laughs> uh i wonder if i can let me quickly while i'm talking find you a link that i will put in the um comments um <clears throat> the number one thing that i um a technique if you like that i recommend to people um is a masterson method technique um let's get this link um the masterson method is a uh, I'll put this in the comments for you. Is um, um, a bodywork um, um, technique for horses. Um, I, I dare say you can do a lot of them with other animals too. And this one in particular, I would say you could do with most animals. Um, and it's this anyone can do this you don't need to go on a course or have you know be at a certain stage or level or um skill level anyone can do this it's really easy you watch that video <coughs> and <coughs> watch maybe watch it a couple of times and then try it yourself um you basically um it's a really simple thing that you can do that's going to help you with your relationship with your animal your connection with your animal it's going to um it's going to kind of get you more on the same page of listening to and understanding each other it's going to let your horse or pet know that you are listening to them and um, you'll understand why when if you do it um and it's smooths out any jaggy energy um, and balances their energy and grounds them and it, I, I think you could you could do it probably every day you could do it every time before you ride your horse um, 
uh, you could try it before and after, see which works better for your animal. Um, <clears throat> let me know how you get on with that. I recommend that to a lot of people. So even if you think, oh, all this energy stuff and chakras and oh gosh, it's a lot and I don't understand any of it and I could never do that. You can do this. So that's a place that you could get started. Um, <laughs> Ruth says, very keen, please hurry up. Keep pressuring me, Ruth, because I need to do it. I want to do it, I just haven't haven't done it. Um, okay, <clears throat> so that was chakras. I hope that makes t sense about chakras. And then um, Lynette asked um, how to rebalance your horse's energy and also talk about how, how it becomes unbalanced. So I hope that answers the question about how it becomes unbalanced. You know, with your horses, it could be... Um, Gosh, you know, bad weather could could make them just fritz things up a bit. Um, it could be if you take them to shows or, you know, take them anywhere off the property. It could be energy that they're picking up somewhere else. It could be energy they pick up from um, people that are handling them if it's not just you. Or even, um, you know, vets, body workers, farriers. Farriers don't always have the best energy, do they? <laughs> um, yeah, so lots of lots of possibilities, unfortunately. But as I said, the key is noticing it and, and addressing it um, sooner rather than later. Um, so um, so as far as rebalancing your horse's energy, have a go at that Masterson um, bladder meridian technique um, and keep pressuring me to, to teach you more. I've come to the end of the questions that I had on my sheet. So if anyone else has any questions right now, now's your chance. Otherwise, I probably, um, we're probably at the end. You're probably all ready to go and do something different. Um, let me know if anyone has any questions. I will give you a couple of minutes in case anyone thinks of anything. Um, anything else I can tell you or share with you? Um, well, Cheryl says thanks for that. I'd be up for an energy course. Cool. Uh, Lisa says do you ever get things in dreams? Oh actually not really. Um, I had a really weird dream recently but I it's so weird that I can't repeat it. <laughs> it was about a friend. <clears throat> most of my, I do dream a lot, really a lot, but most of my dreams relate to, um, you know, things that happened to me that day or stuff that's been on my mind. So, uh, but that one the other day was a bit odd about, and it was about a friend that I haven't seen for a long time. So not sure, not sure if that meant something or not. Time will tell, I suppose. Ruth said, did I cover the... Uh, yeah, I did a whole chunk on pendulums, um, Ruth, earlier. So um, go back and watch. It's sort of in the middle. Uh, go back and watch uh, afterwards and you'll get all the pendulum stuff. Um, yeah, so I think that's us. Thanks so much for joining me. It's nice to see so many of you there and um, go back and uh, I've put various links in too about learning animal communication and um, oh, shall I put, what was the other, I gave you the link for the pendulum workshop, here's the link for the Oracle card workshop in case anyone's interested in that. <clears throat> if you want to learn about, um, you know, why Oracle cards are cool and the sorts of, they're just a really good way of, of um, increasing your intuition um, and getting kind of clarity about something that might be on your mind or what direction to take about something. So 
cool. All right, I'm going to call it quits there. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope that's been helpful. Um, those of you that are re-watching this, um, sorry you missed out for um, freebies and asking questions, but um, you could ask, still ask your questions and I'll, um, if, if they haven't already been, ans been answered, I'll, I'll store them up and maybe that'll spur me on to uh, do another video soon. So thanks so much for joining me and um, I will endeavour to stay in touch. Thank you.